it's EICTC, Trent Clark, editor in chief, Hip Hop DX. We got a very special guest, Miss Faith Evans, promoting her The King and I album. So I, I got a chance to listen to. How you doing? I'm oh, good. How you doing? Incredible. I'm a little hoarse from that's, talking so much. That's all good. I see you've been <laughs> on a strenuous press run, you know. But this is a big album, you know. Uh, I actually got a chance to. You know, soak it up and everything. Was this a sample player's nightmare? You know, how like I know like you've been working on this for a while. It's been announced for a while, and you meticulously took a lot of you know Biggie verses to make them fit you know your vocals and the vibe. You know, was it was it a nightmare putting it together on the back end? Actually, no. Um, on, on the sample side, <clears throat> I mean, when you think about the fact that I'm still sampling. Big still, mm -hmm. even though his stuff sampled a lot of people, but I would like to think that by now, most of that stuff that was a sample issue is settled by now. I know we've had our share of lawsuits as <laughs> big as a state, so. Now, you know, the comparisons to Big and Tupac are great, but one of, them, one of the bigger ones is Biggie didn't have a lot of material in the vault, you know, so how, how, how hard was it for you to, you know, sit and go to songs that maybe even been repurposed by Bad Boy in previous releases to, you know, fit exactly with your vocals. Because, you know, on some of the tracks you're rapping, some of the tracks you're, you're bouncing off with Big and some of the other guest stars. Well, um, my approach wasn't really so much to, to use the songs that Puff didn't, you know, um, put on the du Duets album. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, was there another one after that? I think that was, was the, final, sure? the final chapter. Right, so that wasn't really my goal. I mean, I knew that I was going to do something totally different anyway, even if it ended up being being a song that was previously reworked. Um, it was, number one, to work with the stuff that I had <laughs> <laughs> in hand. And secondly, um, we also were able to acquire some um, unheard verses. Like, um, I'm sure you've heard um, the ones that were originally Big's references for Absolutely. like little, little C's and Lil' Kim. So I know nobody's ever heard that unless they were in the studio when he laid them down, you know? I had to give a quick rewind. Like, wait, <laughs> you know, I thought I knew all Big's material. Threw you off for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nah, but yeah, I mean, you know, even the stuff that's familiar, like you said, the way I reworked it, I mean, I, I, my plan was to just do something creative and, you know, my Faith Evans interpretation of it. It wasn't, you know, let me do... I, that wasn't my goal, back to my point, yeah. to do what Puff did already. Nice. Now, you, you're, you're one of the original R&B divas, especially when R&B turned into uh, what it is known, you know, not old school, not golden R&B. You know, so how, 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 how has it been throughout your life to be a part of this B.I.G. legacy, you know, especially, you know, with his murder and everything. But, you know, like you, you have your own career, everybody looks to you towards, you know, like you're one of the first ladies of R&B, you know, especially when 90s, you know, anyone asks anybody, the 90s was the best period for R&B. I mean, it's a blessing to, to have been a part of his life. I mean, not only is he, you know, just incredible and to see how 20 years later, people that didn't even know him personally, personally like we do, it seems like their love for him is exudes the same way, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, so that's a blessing to have known him. I mean, I'm attached to a, a huge legacy, but I mean, it's also my responsibility as his, as um, the co-executor of his estate to do what I can to extend his legacy tastefully and in ways that make sense. So yeah, absolutely, that's my job. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, it's March, 2017, you know, the 20th anniversary of his uh, death has passed and the 20th anniversary of life after death has passed. So March is pretty much like Biggie season. You know, I know you were in New York for March 9th and everything. What was your experience like? Was it surreal or was it another day or did you already know what you're, how you're gonna handle this going into it? Had I been in LA, it would have probably been just like another day other than me seeing things on Instagram and hearing, you know, the radio plays music all day. That's probably the second time um, since, you know, his passing that I have been in New York on March 9th. And it's a whole different, it's a, you know, it's a totally different feeling to be there. Yeah. You know, of course, everybody's doing parties and tributes. Everything is called a Biggie tribute, you know. But just the city, the fact, I mean, this year, what made it particularly special was the fact that the um, Barclays did the Biggie night for the for the Nets and Knicks game. That was game. huge. Um, and that was really big, and I was so happy just to be able to see Miss Wallace experience that, you know, because you know in the in the beginning of his career she wasn't really all into you know rap and stuff. She didn't really, I don't think she started realizing the magnitude of her son until 
the day of his funeral, to be quite honest. Mm. I mean, when you, you know, what you, the scene in, in the movie Notorious when we were in the limo after his funeral, like that was really the look that I saw on her face when she saw all these people in, you know, the, every area of New York that we drove through, just hanging out over bridges, office buildings, projects. Everywhere you looked, there was people just with big posters or just spray painted signs, you know. So um, for her to be able to see that, I think, you know, that was the biggest thing for me. Nice. And I, I do remember too, like the documentary of, you know, talking about B.I.G. and the day of his funeral, actual funeral in real life, someone doing hypnotize and, you know, Brooklyn just became a big part. Yeah. You know? Uh, and we're going to the 20th anniversary of Life After Death. Um, but you are on Life After Death. You did appear on it. Uh, tell me about the making of You're Nobody So Somebody Kills You. I don't really know anything about the making of it. Puff asked me to come in and do some hums <laughs> and sing the little, um, you, you know, just it sing it in the high part. I, it was, Big had already sang it, so I basically just sang what he sang an octave higher, you know. Right. He wasn't in the studio at the time? No, he wasn't. Listening to that track, how surreal is it, like when you put it in perspective of what he was actually talking about? Oh, it's very surreal, but so are a lot of his songs, you know, I think, because they're so real in any way in the first place, you know what I mean? They're, it's like, the, but the likelihood that it would happen to him, what he's talking about, is certainly, you know, makes it even crazier, but, you know, a lot of his songs talked about guns and you know death and yeah. violence you know right, look at the album titles all right and i know you just talked to the breakfast club you mentioned that you're going to do your own biopic yes you know where where does that start and does it continue on to present day you know like you, you dropped the autobiography yes i did um well yeah it will certainly extend beyond where my memoir left off um because that was almost 10 years ago um it's actually not going to be a um, major release like Notorious. We're going to mm -hmm. probably do it on the film festival circuit, but it's okay. going to be on a, a TV network. Um, and I'm sure they're going to make their like big press release announcement and well, say who they are. <laughs> and you, you don't seem to get phased, you know, speaking of biopics, you don't seem to get phased when uh, the, you know, the Tupac and Biggie anniversaries are coming around. You, obviously, you know, we have the All Eyes on Me biopic coming around, you mm -hmm. know. How, how anticipated or anxious are you for your portrayal in that? Um, I can't exactly. say I am either one, exactly. actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, that's not my story, so I'm sure it's, there might be another somebody's story floating around that they have there, whatever they have to say about me. That, you know, I don't know. I don't really feel any way about it, though. I mean, they reached out well, to did. my attorney about um, clearing some music, but I mean, I'm not sure where it went from there, but other than that. I ain't tripping. Well, I, I don't even think you ever, did you ever like publicly do like interviews around, like hit him up or, you know, Tupac's legacy? Like around the, around the time, 97, 98, after a lot of the smoke cleared? When did people like ever ask you, you know, put you in a hot seat and ask you about hit him up? Of course people have. It, it, didn't, it didn't seem like it just, it phased you or it took part of your... Well, it wasn't my song. So, I mean, I couldn't really, I, I mean, you know, I don't, what, what am I going to say about it? Oh, I feel it. <laughs> All right, so The King of I, it comes out on May 19th. Why not the 21st? Um, I don't know. Maybe that, I mean, maybe it's not the right day. Which is Biggie's week. birthday. For releases, to okay. be honest. And on you know Fridays. What I mean? Right, I don't, I don't really know what, the, what day of the week it falls on. I wouldn't mind if it was the 21st. But I mean, to be quite honest, I had plans for the album to be released last year. Mm -hmm. It wasn't ready in time. And when the music was ready... You know, I just felt we needed a better plan and setup so I could, you know, go tell people about it. So with it falling into 2017, of course, it would make sense to, you know, to, um, you know, to, um, you know, knowing that there were certain milestones this year. But I mean, I didn't want it to be around his, the death anniversary. Of like March 9th. So I'm like, well, if anything, you know, I would rather be around his birthday nice. than, you know, in, in March. Nice. It's a pretty layered album, too. You address a lot of things, you know, like you play off of Biggie, you know, some of Biggie's uh, playful, like uh, macking lyrics and everything, but you do address, you know, the March 9th shooting, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that was actually, I think Busta Rhymes was on that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said Busta Rhymes and Biggie, they go way back, even past you know, just victory or flavor in your year? Oh, Buster used to, I mean, I'm sure they knew each other before. I, me and Big Mac, but he used to come by our 
our apartment quite a bit looking for Big and when Big was, you know, first going on the road and nine times out of ten Big wasn't there. So Before he'd just phones. hang out for a minute, you know, with me in China and smoke an L and move around. But Bust says, <laughs> you know, he was always really cool. So it was, you know, it was to me very natural. It's funny because I, just like Kim, I wanted to work with, you know, Kim a few albums ago. I wanted Bust to be on the song of mine, a couple of my songs, you know, on my independent projects. And it just didn't happen, but I just never knew that it would happen for this project with me and Big, which is, you know, it just totally makes sense. Yeah. And it makes it even more special. Yeah. And, was, and like I said, that was my next question. <clears throat> you know, that was special that you got little Kim. You know, mm -hmm. Well, actually, you guys reunited on the Bad Boy reunion tour. You know, people got to see you guys uh, grace the same stage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now you got her on the album, you know, talking about how big he is the illness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so, you know, when the, when the album drops, you know, people are going to obviously assume it's just, hey, another B.I.G. project with old vocals. But I, I've heard it and you, you actually put in time, you know, EP in it and arranging even the guest appearances. What do you want people to take away from it? You know, how, how can it build on B.I.G.'s legacy, especially for the kids who don't even know anything about it? Um, well, I mean, I don't know. People have a choice in what they like. I mean, I can't say, oh, you better like it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I know that um, I stay true. I always stay true to the music that my fans, you know, want to hear from me, but I know that I stretched myself creatively in that I was working with Big and he had his own, his own separate set legacy, set of fans, you know. So it, I wouldn't say I was challenged, but every day when the song started coming out better and better, I was just like, why am I, you know, obviously I'm not the only one liking it. And after yeah. a year of playing certain songs back and working with different people and them all kind of feeling the same way about the previous things that were that weren't their songs they worked on, you know. I'm like, okay, I'm not just, you know. Because I don't typically just like everything I do anyway. I, 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 I mean, I'm a producer, so I go back and do a whole song over if I'm like, nah, it could be better, you know. But I, I'm very proud, and to be honest, there were a couple of times um, toward the end of recording the album that I felt like Big kind of tapped me on my shoulder and told me he was proud. So uh, all I can do is just hope that people um, receive it and you know, get into the story of it or able to kind of hear from beginning to end and appreciate the, the comedy, you know, the humor, the tears, the laughter, you know, all of that stuff. But, you know, it's my creative expression of, of our love. That's nice. And, you know, it doesn't get uh, brought up too much, but you guys were super young, you mm -hmm. know, when you guys are going, going through it and everything. So I guess that was to ex be expected of a couple 20 something year olds. You know, what was married, to be expected? You know, just uh, drama. Oh, well, not necessarily. I think you got to factor in, the, add in the fact that we were in the music industry and things just happened really quickly. And yes, we were young and obviously immature and not quite prepared for what we didn't know <laughs> we should have been prepared for. <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, it's all good. I don't. I don't regret the. I don't regret that fact. You yeah. know, I wouldn't have met the love of my life. I wouldn't have. You know, I wouldn't be here right now, yeah. talking about this project. I wouldn't. You know, things would totally be different. So I, I can't regret it. What's up, y'all? It's Faith Evans shouting out Hip Hop DX, my album The King and I, coming May nineteenth, y'all. Pre-order it right now. <laughs>